جزاک اللہ ڈاکٹر زاکر فر یور ویری ویری انفرمیٹیو لیکچر ٹوڈے ناو وی کم ٹو دی سیکنڈ پارٹ آف آور پروگرام اور دیٹ اس کوئیسٹن آنسر سیشن دی کوئیسٹن آنسر سیشن وڈ بی کنڈکٹیڈ ایز فالوز دی مائکس آر دیر ایڈ مائی لیفٹ اینڈ ان مائی فرنٹ ان دی سینٹر آئیل اینڈ دیر ایز ای مائک ان دی لیڈیز سیکشن ایز ویل دوز ہو وانٹ ٹو آس کوئیسٹنز می کم ٹو دیز مائکس اینڈ دی کین آس کوئیسٹنز فرسٹ آف آل کوئیسٹنز دیٹ وڈ بی آسٹ وڈ بی ریلیٹڈ ٹو دی ٹاپک ایکسپٹ ٹو دی نان مسلم برادرز ہو ویل ہیو دی رائٹ ٹو آس اینی کوئیسٹن دیٹ دی وڈ لائک ٹو آس دی کوئیسٹنر ہیز ٹو گیو ہیز نیم اینڈ پروفیشن دی کوئیسٹن شوڈ بی ویری شارٹ اینڈ بریف وداؤٹ گوئنگ ان ٹو اینی انٹروڈکٹری اسپیچ دیٹ وڈ سیو ٹائم آئی وڈ اسپیشلی ریکویسٹ اوور والنٹیئرس ٹو انشیور دیٹ دی پرسن ہو کمس ٹو دی مائک is a non-muslim now we begin our question answer session with a mic on my left hand any brother especially non-muslim brother who would like to ask a question may feel free to come and ask a question my name is ramakrishna i am a physiotherapy student my question is what is the need of allah to create adam and eve and this total universe what he will get from this And my second question is, everything is created by someone. So even God must have been created by someone. What is the meaning of Allah? Brothers ask three questions. The first question, why did God create Adam and Eve and what was his reason to create all this world and humankind? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam and Eve. May peace be upon them both so that the humankind could come. They were the great, great grandparents. Allah says in Surah Hujurat, Chapter number 49, verse number 13. Ya ayyuhan nasu inna khalaqnaakum min zakrin wa unsa wa jaalnaakum shuba wa kaba ila litaarafu inna karamakum in the loyat kaakum inna la alimun khabir O humankind, we have created you from a single pair of male and female and have divided you into nations and tribes so that you may recognize each other not that you may despise each other and the most honored in the sight of Almighty God is the person who has taqwa the criteria to judge any human being it is not wealth, it's not color, it's not caste, it's not creed, it is taqwa, it is God consciousness, it is righteousness, it is piety. So Adam and Eve, peace be upon them both, they were our great great grandparents of yours also and of mine also, all humankind. Therefore I call you a brother, we are brothers in humanity. Allah says, yeah you are nas, oh humankind. And Allah says in Surah Isra chapter number 17, verse number 70, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي Adama. Almighty God has honored all the children of Adam, whether they are born in India, USA, UK, born in a Hindu family or a Muslim family or a Christian family, Allah says He has honored all the Bani Adam. If you are a human being, Allah has honored you. Whether your name is Zakir, Abdullah, Ramu, Shankar, if you are born as a human being, Allah has honored you. Now coming to the question, why has Almighty God created the human beings? Allah has created the human beings because Allah says this is one of His best creation. All the other creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they obey Him. We have the angels, whatever Almighty God says, the angels obey Him directly. They have no free will. The human being is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which has a free will. We can either obey Him or disobey Him. So Allah has created such a creation. We are one of His best creation in the best of forms. But we have a choice of either obeying God or disobeying God. If we obey God, we will go to Jannah, we will go to Swarg, we will go to heaven. If you disobey him, we'll go to hell, we'll go to narq. So this is a test for the hereafter. Allah says in Surah Mulk, chapter number 67, verse number 2, Allazi khalaqal mawta wal hayata. It is Allah who has created death and life to test which of you is good in deeds. So this life is a test for the hereafter. So Allah has created the human beings and Allah says in Surah Dhariyat, chapter number 51, verse number 56, that we have created the jinn and the men not but to worship him so we are supposed to worship obey the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is the different creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which has the free will of even going against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or obeying him all the other things the stars the trees the mountains the Quran says they do sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they prostrate to him they obey him we have a free will now when Allah has given a free will, with the free will if we obey Him, we become higher than the angels. 
with the free will if we disobey him we become the partners of the devil so he's created us for the test for the hereafter coming to your second question everything has a creator who created god if anyone says everything has a creator it is a wrong statement every created thing has a creator the definition of god is he is uncreated the moment you say who created god he is not god the definition of god is he is uncreated suppose a person comes and ask you that brother my friend john he was admitted in the hospital he gave birth to a child can you guess was it a girl or a boy can you guess try it out guess can't guess why can you on the microphone can you guess was it a girl or a boy huh see brother john he was admitted in the hospital he gave birth to a child was it a girl or a boy can you guess a 50 50% chance girl or boy people are laughing why can you guess can't guess why even if you guess can you get the answer right acha can you guess i'll give you two chances was it a girl or a boy <laughs> try and out girl girl <laughs> brother can a man give birth to a child <laughs> ah there you made a mistake same way you made a mistake by asking who created god a man cannot give birth to a child so where's the question of it being girl or a boy see now you understood <laughs> ah now that's good brother so it was a man cannot give birth to a child so where's the question of a girl or a boy so when you're asking who created god god by definition allah by definition is uncreated the moment you say who created allah he's not allah walam yaqul lahu kuffanat there nothing like him coming to your last part of the question who is allah who is allah the best definition i can give you is quote to you surah ikhlas chapter number 112 verse number 1 to 4 it's mentioned in the quran kul huwa allah ahad say he is allah one and only allah us samad allah the absolute and eternal lam yalid wa lam yulad he begets not nor is he begotten wa lam yakul lahu kuffan ad there is nothing like him this is a four line definition of allah subhanahu wa taala any human being any person says so and so candidate is god if that candidate fits in this four line definition we muslims have got no objection in accepting that candidate as god four line definition this is the litmus test for theology for the study of god first is qul huwa allah ahad say is allah one and only allah us samad allah the absolute and eternal lam yalid wa lam yulad he begets not nor is he begotten wa lam yakul lahu kuffan ad there nothing like him If you go to the Hindu scriptures, the same is mentioned in the Hindu scriptures. Kulvalawad is mentioned. If you read Chandogya Upanishad, chapter number six, section number two, verse number one, ekam evidityam. God is only one without a second. Second test. Allah has summed. Allah the absolute eternal. Bhagavad Gita chapter number ten, verse number three says, "I am known as the Lord of all the worlds, the unbegotten, the beginningless." Third test. Lam milad balam yulad. He begets not, nor is he begotten. It's mentioned in the Shweta Shweta Upanishad, chapter number six, verse number nine. Nachas se kasij janita na chadipa. Of him there are no lords. He has got no parents. Almighty God has got no father. He has got no mother. And valam ye kulla ukufanad. There is nothing like him. Is mentioned in Shweta Shweta Upanishad, chapter number four, verse number nineteen. And Yajurved, chapter number thirty-two, verse number three, where it says, Nachas se patima asti. Of that God, there is no patima. There is no idol. There is no image. There is no photograph. There is no sculpture. Who says that? Yajurved, chapter number thirty-two, verse number three. Same as Walam ye kul lau kufanad. So any person saying so and so candidate is God, if that candidate fits in the four-line definition, we Muslims have got no objection in accepting that candidate as God. For example, some people say Bhagwan Rajneesh is Almighty God. One during question answer time, a Hindu told me we don't believe Bhagwan Rajneesh to be God. I never said that the Hindus believe Bhagwan. Rajnish is God. I said some people believe Bhagwan Rajnish to be God. Let us put this Rajnish to test. First test is Kul Hu Allah Ahad. Say is Allah one and only. Was Rajnish one and only? Was he the only man who claimed divinity? There are hundreds of them, and in this country we have thousands of men who have claimed divinity. He is not the only one. But Rajnish Bhakti said no, no, he is unique. Let's go to the next test. 